Peggy 18. It was in 1991 that, uh, that we created Duke Nukem and released it to the world as a side-scroller, and um, it was a huge hit. Our inspiration back then was comic books because we always felt like if you focus on the character, there's no end of stories. Now Duke does it his way, <laughs> and, it's, and, and, and his way is very entertaining. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a wild, wild thing. The original name for the game was actually called Heavy Metal. And the idea was to have sort of an anti-hero who was very much um, sort of a renegade in society and uh, sort of you know an ex-military guy who went rogue. When the original Duke got started, it was myself, uh, Alan Blum, and another uh, programmer, Todd Repogel. Todd Repogel and I went to school together. We grew up together in Santa Cruz. He started making um, side scrollers and stuff. And while I was going to school at UCSC studying um, computer science, we were working on Duke Nukem 1 together. There's a guy I'd like to, I, I, you know, anytime I have an opportunity, I like to call him out. Uh, his name's Alan Blum. And Alan, he created Duke. He and Todd Replogle, back in 1991, 92, created the for original 2D side scrollers of, of Duke Nukem. And, you know, great, fun games. And uh, he's the one guy that from the very first moment of Duke existing all the way through till today has been involved in the Duke projects. It's, it's very childish, so it, it's, it doesn't take itself seriously, you know. It's, you know, instead of trying to fit a formula or trying to do certain things, it just does stuff you want to do. Duke Nukem has always been about the character. and. You know, we were focused on that in the beginning. It was difficult to bring it out with the, with the side-scrolling, simple technology in which, you know, we couldn't have voice work and so on. Actually, the voice started with Duke Nukem 2. At the, at the opening cinematic, he says, I'm back. Todd Replogel, the original Duke Nukem programmer, came to me and just asked about doing a voice because he wanted Duke Nukem to sound like, at least then anyway, sounded like a cross between McBain and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Those were my instructions. And I just said two words. I said, I'm back. I am back. The original Duke that Todd and I were working on didn't really work well. And when George joined the company, he actually spent several nights kind of redesigning, you know, and, you know, back in those days, it's like, you know, it was EGA and very pixelated stuff. But he gave Duke his little smile and gave it the yellow haircut and everything and kind of really made the character look the way he, he still looks today. What? Did you think I was gone forever? Too long. We waited too long, frankly. And there's, I don't know if there's anything that could live up to the idea of 15 years of development, but this is absolutely a worthy successor and a worthy sequel to the game. I think that this is what fans um, have wanted to come out, and it's finally come out. I'm, I can't be more excited. If you're a Duke fan, and especially you're one of the fans that hang out on the 3D Realms forums for all that time, refusing to give up, refusing to, you know, give in to the naysayers or whatnot, you're going to have a blast with this because it is a hell of a lot of fun.